Hey everyone, it's Christian, your local Vancouver realtor. And for today's video, I want to talk about real estate taxes in BC. You know, I did a video on this about six years ago and so much has changed since then. And if you are thinking of buying property, whether it's pre-sale or resale here in BC, you may want to take the next five, six minutes and, and watch this. And I'll drop a few pro tips in here for you as well, which could save you tens of thousands of dollars. So please listen carefully here. Okay, so the biggest tax, the big one here uh, that affects most of you is the GST on pre-sales. So when you're buying a pre-sale, pre-built, uh, let's say a million dollars, you're going to pay 5% GST, $50,000. Now, the good news is you can roll that into your mortgage, so that helps somewhat. Now, a few things on that. Let's say you're buying a property that was a pre-sale, it was completed, the seller has paid the GST, and now the seller is selling it for the first time. Well, if nobody has lived in that property for a year, uh, you may, as the first resale buyer be forced to pay another GST because the CRA, Canada Revenue Agency, has been double dipping on this and we've seen this and I, I did see one lady in my old office where she represented a buyer and unknowingly had to pay a 5% uh, upon the closing even though it had already been paid by the previous buyer in pre-sales. So you have to talk to your agent about that and as I would even bring in the real estate lawyer when I'm working with my clients because I just want to tie up any loose ends and make sure my client isn't on the hook. Now here's an, another pro tip and that is we want to get the seller to pay for that if they are the first seller to put it on the market. And there's some language we can put in the contract that holds their feet to the fire and makes them responsible for that. And you, you want to do that. Okay. Now, one other thing here on, on buying pre-sales is a company or an individual buying in a numbered company can defer that GST. And this is where an unknowing buyer who's buying it, like any other resale, gets stuck with that 5%. And, and again, on a million dollar property, that's $50,000. So you have to ask the right questions of the other agent as well in the negotiation process and then put, put specific language into the contract to protect yourself. Okay. Moving along, uh, let's go to resale. And resale, of course, we, we do know, it's common knowledge that you have a property transfer tax here in BC. The property transfer tax breakdown is 1% on the first 200,000 and then 2% on the balance up to 2 million for, for most of you. So that means if it is a resale property, you're buying for a million dollars, there's $18,000 that you are responsible for and you pay the province at closing. So you better account for that early on. Now, when it comes to pre-sales, however, uh, if you buy a property that's under 750, then that is zero. So it can really help to find a pre-sale on occasion and negotiate with the developer. And you can do that now in this market and get that as low as you can, hopefully under 750. So your tax obligations, your PTT, property transfer tax goes to zero. From 750 to 800,000, it's on a tiered scale. And then at 800,000 and above, you're paying the regular property transfer tax, which at 800K would be $14,000. Moving along, in resale, when you're buying, there is one bone the provincial government throws you, and that is the first time buyer exemption. The first time buyer exemption is if you can find a property under 500,000, you pay zero. But above 500 to 525, you're on a tiered, and from 525 and above, you're paying the full PTT. Now, here, here's the question though. Where are you gonna find anything for under 500,000? Well, maybe we can get a one bedroom in Surrey, or Langley, or Maple Ridge, 
But for the most part, that is no longer applicable. And uh, that's because that exemption, uh, well, it helped about 10 years ago. It doesn't now. A few other things. When it comes to capital gains tax for investors, um, as you know, if you own a property and uh, as an investor, let's say you bought it for 500000 and you held it for 12 years and sold it for a million, that gain of $500,000 will be taxable, 50% of it, so $250,000 of, of the five hundred dollars would be taxable uh, as part of your income in the year that you sold it. So uh, you, you would, you know, I always say in terms of your gain, rule of thumb, you're going to pay about a quarter in taxes, but check with your accountant to be 100% on that. Now, here's a pro tip. Let's say you bought a property and you lived there for five years. Let's say you bought it at 500000 you lived there for five years, and when you moved out, its value was 700000 And you rented it out for the next decade and then sold it at a million. What you would want to do when you move out, pro tip, get an appraisal done on the property because what that does is it marks in a period of time what the value was when you moved out because between 500 and 700 K when it was your principal residence, you don't pay tax on that. It's very important. It was your principal residence. What is taxable then is the 700 to 1 million. So the $300,000 when you owned it as an investor, but you got to prove that to CRA and you do that by calling a, a, a realtor like myself and I can do a market appraisal on the property. And I mean, that's a, a courtesy that a lot of professional realtors would do for their clients. I certainly do it for my clients. A few other taxes. I mean, the big one here obviously is the foreign buyer tax. Uh, that applies to very few people. Right now, it's less than 1% of all purchases. So 1,000 sales in BC, about 9 or 10 are foreign buyers right now. And for the foreign buyers, they have to pay 20% upon completion. So that means if you buy a million dollar property, you're paying $200,000. I tell my clients that if they are waiting for their PR papers, just push the pause button. Let's get those PR papers in in your hands. And once you do, that w strikes that 200,000 to zero. And that's where we want to see it, of course. And uh, that helps them a great deal. So those are just a few of the taxes. Now, a couple of regional taxes we have in BC. We have, uh, in BC, we have something called the speculation tax, spec tax. Uh, and what that is, the breakdown for that is, for a Canadian, it's 0.5%, and for a foreigner, it's 2%, or satellite families. And so you know what that is. That's, in essence, BC's version of the empty homes tax. So if you're not living there for more than six months, uh, basically the province is going to come and tax you. Now, how do they know that you're not living there? I'm not 100% sure. Uh, maybe they are checking your electricity usage or your, your gas usage, but I'm not sure. And uh, the city of Vancouver has their version of the empty homes tax called the EHT. And for them, it's a 3% for the year of 2022. So if your uh, assessed value of your property is, let's say a million dollars, $30,000 would be uh, your tax if you left it uh, empty for more than six months in 2022. And that tax jumps to 5% in 2023. So it's uh, it, it's a killer. <laughs> so you want to make sure that you've got the property rented out or you're living in it, uh, or you may want to consider selling it. And if that's the case, feel free to get in contact with us. We are here to help you. And look, if you've got comments or questions uh, pertinent to your situation, because every situation is different, go ahead, give us a call. Our contact is below. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.